here is a French movie to talk about. Where's La Haine? This is one of my favorite French movies um, ever made. <laughs> Okay, we're rolling? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well this is great. I just saw this today. Now this is a great example. If you don't really understand horror, mm -hmm. you like this movie. Because this is not really a horror movie. We just need to acclimate. I don't want to acclimate, I want to go. Absolutely not. There's a difference between movies that are just disturbing mm -hmm. versus movies that are super scary. And I like to think that most of the movies that we do are just super scary as opposed to just showing things that are gross. Mm. And what this was full of was showing things that are gross. No! <gasps> now this movie is very important to me, La La Land. I never saw this movie. And I never saw this movie because we made Whiplash. And we were supposed to make this movie, and well, he threw me off. And I was so upset that we never got to make this movie that I was never able to bring myself to see this film. But I told myself, if I ever um, uh, win Best Picture, I'm gonna watch La La Land. Did you see La La Land? Um, Whiplash was better. Yeah, yeah. Of, of course. course. Yeah. Now, yeah. this movie, I think, Parasite, part of the reason it was able to win Best Picture, I think, is because of Get Out. Yeah. I think Get Out made Oscar voters feel like you could, you could vote for a horror movie, and now they got comfortable enough to give this movie Best Picture, which I'm very happy about. It's great. <laughs> Big success in the US and big success in France, 1.7 million admissions. Even if there are subtitles, yes, we're slowly learning to read in the United States, but we're very slow, very slow, very slow. This is very scary. Right. You work with him? Yeah, I was my old boss. I mean, that's, that, that's how he looked when I used to work for him, a very... Why didn't you touch my priest? Oh, please, I'm sorry, just come on, I'm used to that. Was it a good way for you to be like a better boss later? Yes, to learn what not to do. It was good. Yeah, it was good, actually. It was good. This is one of the best foreign language movies I've seen in a long time. Very close to a genre movie. It almost is a genre yeah. movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this movie was, was an extraordinary movie. Really a great movie. Now, It yeah. is a movie I wish we made. I think scares should be earned. So I don't like putting jump scares just for the sake of jump scares. You know what I mean? I think you should earn the jump scares. I thought in the first one, they earned it pretty well. I thought the second, the, like I said, the second one, not so much, but the first one, pretty good. Signs. Now we did three movies with Night. Uh, the Visit. Would you mind getting inside the oven to clean it? Glass. And we did Split. My name's Hedwig. How old are you? Nine. He was a very underrated director, and now I think people are liking him again, but for a while people forgot about him. Les Affranchis. For me, this was my perfect movie. I just thought, like, it kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. My favorite scene is that scene with Ray Liotta in the car, you know, when he's driving and it's counting yeah. down in the car. See that, Michael? See that helicopter? See right, right. there? Yeah, right in front yeah. of us there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been following me all morning. Get the fuck out of here. What are you, nuts? I'm telling you. I didn't like The Irishman nearly as much. Way too long. I mean, Scorsese is one of the greatest directors ever, but he should have made The Irishman for less money and done it theatrically. That, that If he had called me, I would have told him that, but he isn't asking for my advice. Instead of making it for 200, maybe make it for 100 and do it theatrically and make it shorter. I think to give a director parameters to work within makes the work better. What's the most important thing is the character and the story. If you lower the budget, the only thing he can use to make the movie better is character and script and story. He or she can't spend time on crane, special effects, all this other stuff. So I do think it makes the movies better. Now my directors don't necessarily agree, but, but, <laughs> but I, think, I think it does, I think it does. You know, I like Deadpool, I like Deadpool. Tell me where your fucking boss is, or you're gonna die in five minutes. I don't love Marvel and Star Wars, and I know that's crazy for a producer, but that was never my thing. It would be interesting to make a low budget superhero movie though. We're developing, actually, we're developing a um, Muslim superhero movie. This is breaking news. We've never announced it, so we're announcing it here. One of our directors talked to me about a gay superhero movie, which I think would be 
amazing. He's actually working on that. So, you know, if he, if he comes up with a good script, I'd love to do that. So, so maybe I'll do those too. This I see hiding here is a movie that uh, I did with Lee. And now I'm here with for Invisible Man. He has figured out a way to be invisible. That's ridiculous. Oh, I see you put out Blair Witch Project. So this movie was very, very important to our company. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. I was working for Dimension and Miramax. I, I saw this movie before it came out, before Sundance, and I, I, uh, I didn't buy it. I passed on it, it was a, and it was a huge mistake. And I almost got fired for not buying this movie. And when it screened at Sundance, all the big companies passed on it, and this little company called Artisan bought it. And then it became, you know, the, one of the biggest independent hit movies of all time. And I never would have done Paranormal Activity had I not done this. So I blew it on this. And then when I saw Paranormal Activity and everyone said, no one's buying it, everyone's seen it, it's not gonna work. I said, well, that's what they said about Blair Witch. And this is what started my whole company, Paranormal Activity. We didn't decide to make a sequel until the, until the movie had come out and had done all this business because we all really thought, um, how could you make a found footage sequel? Like, how could you just find more footage? And we looked at this movie and they really messed up the sequel. They did a terrible job on the sequel. If you don't believe in the Blair Witch, then why the hell did you bother to come? I thought the movie was cool. All we did was think about this, what went wrong, and tried to learn from their mistakes, and so we did it differently with this movie. Mm -hmm. And we've made six paranormal activities, yes. there's six, and we're working on number seven. The world may not think they needed another paranormal activity, but when they see it, they'll realize they're, they're what they were missing. This is a great French film, yeah, you know and we messed it up completely. Yeah, this is, I love this movie. Never should have remade it, it was a mistake. And uh, the French movie is much better. How did we destroy it? In every way, it never should have existed, but you know what? Sometimes you make mistakes in the movie business and what can I do, it was a mistake. You are crazy. This movie was the last time I was in Paris. Oh, yeah. Was for Get Out. Get Out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get Out! Yo! I always think of this as like the perfect Blumhouse movie, right? It's low budget, high concept. It's with a director who's had a lot of experience before. The script sat around Hollywood for two or three years before anyone would make it. I always think this like checks every box for, for the perfect Blumhouse movie. Aja, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the translation of this? Oh, The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. Boom. Sans un bruit. It was very good, right? Ah! La cabane dans les bois. I like this movie a lot. We should split up. Yeah, good idea. This is a very special movie. La Nuit des Masques. Cette nuit-là, il est revenu. Yes. Oh, this movie. But this is definitely one of my favorite movies of all time. We got to make one movie with John Travolta, which was a uh, Western called In the Valley of Violence, the Ty West directed, who's a good yeah. indie director in the US. My name? It's Lawrence. All right, Lawrence, Larry, please, for the love of God, get away from the goddamn window. This movie is my, uh, this movie is also an amazing movie. There will be blood. I love this movie because it's so dark and it's so, uh, and his performance is just incredible. I told you I would eat you. We're family. The United States has this kind of glossy um, image, but it's it's not, uh, the, the reality is there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on in the U.S. and I love this movie for exposing you... that. Paul Thomas Anderson, I think, is, is, is maybe my favorite director working now. I would love for Paul Thomas Anderson to do a scary movie. Wouldn't it be amazing if he did? I think I've reached out to his agent a few times, but he won't, he won't take my calls. Now, Scanners is a great movie. You know, Scanners. Ah! Lee Wan L, who directed The Invisible Man, that when we, we were doing uh, questions this morning, and he said, which movie, if there's a movie you'd like to remake, which is it? And he said, I'd like to remake Scanners. Yeah. Where is Baumbach? Here he is, Greenberg. Francis. You're missing the great classic kicking and screaming. What's that you're doing? Huh? 
Oh, I'm uh, measuring the distance from the couch to the TV. Uh, Chet said that we've been sitting a couple inches too close. I produced that movie, because we were. We were roommates in college, and then we were roommates after college. We lived in, uh, in uh, Chicago together, and I did his first movie, which was, called, uh, which was called Kicking and Screening. I thought Marriage Story was actually excellent. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. Dead like, if I can guarantee Henry would be okay, I'd hope you'd get an illness and then get hit by a car and die. Um, oh, this goodbye. is this is the long goodbye. Yeah. Duty, duty, duty. I'm always on duty. Oh, you're going to see the wait. I recognize the car. Hiya, Carrie. Hi. I'll tell you a fun, great story about this movie. When I was 30 years old, yeah. I had a birthday party that Uma Thurman had for me at Quentin Tarantino's house. What? He got a print of this movie when before you got digital stuff, and he screened in his screening room the long goodbye for me, which was very, very nice. I don't think Quentin Tarantino would be fun to produce, in interestingly. I mean, I think that a producer doesn't really have much of a job with Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of along for the ride. One ticket to Tokyo, please. Okay, this is Ryan Murphy. Now, we made a movie together called The Normal Heart. I've never seen or heard of anything like this. This seems to only be happening to gay men. He is an amazing, amazing creator. I love this. It's not, it's not, it's, uh, it's kind of beautiful horror, I think. Yeah. That's kind of how I look at it. He's like got such a great eye and he makes horror beautiful, which I think is, I think is unique to him. And you didn't feel like going out tonight. It's not the getting ready. It's the cleanup. He loves musicals, and for whatever reason, those two things go together. A lot of people who do musicals do horror and vice versa. People who like musicals like horror and the other way around, which you wouldn't think is the case, but, but it is. I've noticed that a lot. <gasps> Here's Grease, my other favorite John Travolta movie. Oh my God. Look how great they look. I mean, spectacular. I used to be able to sing all the songs in this. Of course, we talked about uh, La La Land, yeah. but here's Whiplash. I think it could be a classic. Yeah, I think, I think, I think. I mean, it's knock on wood, knock on my head. It's too soon to say that yet, but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. If there's an inspiration for Blumhouse, it's yeah. definitely Hitchcock. He's the single director. If we look to one director for, for, for an example, we always think about Hitchcock. You've nothing to live for, really, have you? Look down there. It's easy, isn't it? Why don't you? Why don't you? I always think Get Out felt like very much like a, a Hitchcock movie of today. You're so scared. <laughs> you think it was your fault? Yes. This is great in The Dictator. Here we go. The Chuden. And the stiff, the sauerkraut with the Chuden. Bitzak! The Chuden. When I was in college, I watched all of the Chaplin movies and all of the Buster Keaton movies, and I'm looking forward to seeing these again when I can show my daughter. <laughs> Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin, by far the most important. They're amazing storytellers, a lot of times without, without words. Here is a French movie to talk about. Where's La Haine? So this movie I saw in Cannes before anyone had seen it. I saw this movie like the first time it screened and I went crazy for it. And I actually had the poster of this movie in my apartment in New York for years and years and years and years and years. And this is a movie, to answer your other question, that I tried to buy and lost. <laughs> This is one of my favorite French movies um, ever made. No one heard of him, no one knew any, you know, is this black and white movie about gangs? It's like, what is this gonna be? But the two most memorable movies uh, I ever saw at Cannes were Lion and, um, and Pulp Fiction. Audience went crazy. It was like they had seen something like they'd never seen before. What do you make all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped? Oh, what the fuck's happening? Oh, oh man. Shit. Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck did you do that? Just one movie right now? Yeah, right. I'd go with the general. <laughs> <laughs>